and all of a sudden the same spirit that told you, you know, you didn't need a man, you didn't need to get married, and you see a lot of your friends have been married, then all of a sudden you panic and that voice accuses you and tries to make you think that it's too late. And some of the horrible things I've heard have been like we stand after 35 um, a better chance of getting struck by lightning than getting married as black women. I hate that. I hate it. I hate it. And so this video, now that I've um, finally gotten to it, is five reasons why I believe that black women need to get married. And this whole, well, I don't need to be married thing, I think that needs to be go that needs to be um, put away. And I think that um, there probably are a small percentage of women who don't wanna get married and that is fine. Um, do whatever you wanna do. But for those of you who really, really deep down inside wanna be married, um, this is for you. Um, why I believe black women should get married. One, because you deserve to have someone um, that will commit to you, not someone who, um, you know, just wants a wham, bam, thank you, man, ma'am, not someone who just wants, um, you know, to knock you up, leave you with some children and have you um, in a compromised position where you're struggling to raise a child by yourself, when really, ideally, it would be better if it was in a two-parent home. So you deserve it. Don't let anybody string you along, you know, wasting the best years of your life with black like five, 10 year engagements, um, it's just not ideal. It's set up, you know, um, to benefit the man where you're living with someone and, and he's like, I don't need to, um, you know, to commit to you. Like what comes to mind is Nia Long, all the time that she invested in um, that boobaloob who embarrassed her. She's too fine for all of that. Um, she has her beautiful children, praise the Lord, but that is not the type of thing. You need someone who is not afraid to commit to you. And marriage is the best way to be committed to. Number two. So, you know, from the very beginning, you know, I'm all about marriage. It literally says that on, you know, the uh, screen. You also know I'm a Christian and you see that on the screen. But I'm kind of like this lady. I don't always push, you know, biblical values, as crazy as that sounds. And I do it, honestly, almost for the same reasons that this particular lady does. I do think that there are times when I will go straight God on you all. But at the same time, there are times when I'm trying to, you know, just make balance of what's, you know, going out here in these YouTube spaces. So to get back to what she's talking about, there is a, a part, I think, of most people, um, not just women, that they really want somebody committed to them. And marriage is about commitment at the very, I mean, at the, at the core essence. I mean, it's about commitment. I mean, it takes a lot of energy to get a divorce. <laughs> it's actually much easier to get married. I mean, you can get married in three days, you know, go to the courthouse, you know, you fill out a piece of paper. I mean, that's pretty much anywhere in the United States and you're married. Boom, boom, boom. But you want a divorce? Oh, my gosh. It's at least a six month process. Um, a lot of paperwork that has to be filed and they don't move that quick because that actually has to go through the court system. So it's really interesting how quickly and easy it is to get married, but it's very difficult uh, to get a divorce. So it's all about commitment. And, you know, for what the lady is talking about when it comes to women, I honestly say it's the same thing for men. A lot of men don't like to, you know, verbalize it because it's not masculine or seen as masculine to basically say that you want somebody, you know, there with you. But I'm just going to be real. Marriage, the, one of the best things about marriage is that you are literally waking up with a very good friend. And, you know, sometimes you hear me say, that, you know, it's not really your best friend. And, and, and if I use best friend sometimes casually, that's not really what I mean. Um, and I've had people to ask me about that. But your, your person is really not your best friend. They are a good friend um, because there's just certain things you can't share with them. And so because there's certain things you can't share with them, I don't really say that they're your best friend. But I will say that they are a very good friend, an extremely good friend. So now when you say, hey, I want to go to the movies, boom, there's your person. They go into the movies with you. You say, hey, I want to go on vacation. Boom, you have a person right there. They can go on vacation with you. No matter what you want to do, your person is right there. And they're not only doing that, but they're sharing these things with you. Um, you're building memories. You know, you have inside jokes and it builds connection. And it honestly makes the heart happy. It makes, you know, you as a person feel happy. And that's another problem, honestly, with the placeholder situation, because a lot of times, you know, both men and women could be building memories with someone 
and then those memories are going to basically be trashed later and then it just kind of gets really ugly and i'll be honest i think that that's one of the problems with dating because sometimes when you're dating someone you like them and you've been hanging out with them you know maybe for one or two months and then you're starting to build memories and then you get cut off <laughs> and you have to kind of start all over again so it can be emotionally draining to constantly you know meet new people and you can't always transfer your jokes and transfer you know, that inside energy to the next person, because that's a whole new person. I mean, sometimes you can kind of force it a little bit. You know, I know people that try to do that. They try to get their inside jokes to slide to the next person, but it doesn't always work. And so everybody has their own energy that they're working to and through in order to find their person. Um, you need someone to share your load. It's very hard to do everything. And I mean, like, um, I've been married for 32 years and I'm so thankful for my husband because there's some things that I want to do and there's some things that I don't want to do. Like if the kids call and they're talking about something's going on with their car, um, you know, I might say, let's do AAA, you know, give them a call and see what you can do. But for more detailed answers, I'm like, please call your father. Um, you know, that trash, um, something's broken and you know some sort of bug I can't tell what it is it's like honey please take care of that now if he's like well you know did that bill get paid or you know um did we schedule did we do this did we do that you know with online bill pays I got you did we pick up did we send money to this person or that person yes I got all of that, but I don't want to do the other stuff. And I grew up in a single parent home, seeing my mom do everything. Okay. So I like two of the things that she talked about right there. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand is doing things by yourself is literally almost double the work. Um, it's, it's a really interesting phenomenon. People have talked about this. And if I find a, a picture, I'll throw it up on the screen. But basically they, they use the analogy with two horses. If you take one horse and you strap a buggy, to that one horse, that horse has the ability to pull a certain amount of weight. Now, if you take a similar horse and you put it next to it and you strap both of them, you would think that they will be able to carry double the weight, right? And that is true. They can carry double the weight. But would you know that they can actually carry triple the weight? And see, that's the thing. There's actually an invisible horse that exists between the two horses. I think it's, you know, it's triple the weight, it might be 2.5. But no matter what the situation is, they're able to pull more weight because it's two of them. Now, Christians like to get all spiritual and say, oh, that's Jesus. That's Jesus right there in the middle. It's God coming down. But it's, it honestly is just physics. <laughs> um, the, the, the weight of the load is less on the one person. It's just like any stressor. If you have just a stressor, so this is not physical weight, but this is emotional weight, it's easier for a person when they have some, a shoulder to cry on versus if they have to cry into a pillow. The stress is different. So all of these things are better and easier if you have a partner. Now, what you need to make sure of is that your partner is good. And this is one of the big issues. And this is why I always I'm talking to people and I'm especially always talking about the whole thing, the givers and the takers, because see, a lot of people are just takers and we're, we're constantly getting in relationship with takers. And then we get mad that they're takers and then they're mad at us because they're like, well, you like to give. I like to take. What's the problem here? And see, a lot of people are out here and I can say they're complaining, but it's really OK. You did. Did you not pick that dude? Did you not pick him? Did you not know on the fourth date when he did not open the door for you that he wasn't a good dude and what he wanted you to pay? On the third date, you, you didn't you didn't you didn't pick up the memo that you were supposed to move on. But see, in order for a woman to move on, she also has to have those qualities that the next level man is looking for. Now, that's a little bit of a side. I don't want to get too far off topic. But, you know, I just want to make sure I throw that out there because, see, that's one of the issues with, I think, a lot of women when they're and men when they're trying to get to a better type of person. They also have to make sure that they are that type. They can get to that other person. Um, that's tiring and that gets old. So I think you need someone to share your load. That's another benefit of being married to someone. And then number three, you need um, a father 
of your children to be in the home. I mean, that leads to stronger family bonds. Um, you can say, you know, here, um, here's your dad. Um, I need to run out. You know, um, I don't know how to do these um, trigonometry problems or, or pre-calc problems. Here, um, your dad can help you with that. You need someone to balance the, um, the struggle of parenthood. Women should not be taking that on, you know, as, um, as a soul. All right, so now I got to go in deep, all right? And this might hurt some people's feelings, but whatever. You can almost always tell the difference between people when they had their a good loving dad that was strong in the home and when they didn't. You can almost always tell. It is something about a man that speaks into his children, that walks in, in love with his children, and he's able to give them something that you know they just can't get. And I'll be honest, you know, a lot of people, because I don't have any children. So a lot of people, you know, they look at me and they're like, well, Jay, you know, you're not married and you know, and you could be married. And I'm always telling them, I'm like, look, the only, you know, one of the main reasons why I've slowed down, because I could be married by now. I mean, I've had plenty of women that I could have talked to, but a lot of those women didn't want children. You know, because I'm in my 40s, a lot of 40 year old women want to talk to me. And so they'll try to come up to me and sometimes they'll, you know, have already had their children. They're done with having children. Um, or they might just be at that point where they're like, you know what? I'm 40. I don't want to handle no children. My body is at a place. And then if I say, hey, let's do a surrogate, they're like, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I just want to chill. I want to go on vacations and I want to just have fun. And I'm always like, well, no, nah, that's not what I want. Well, I say all of that to say I could go and I could adopt a child. I could go and I could get a surrogate on my own. OK, but I believe that a woman adds to the development of a child. I do. And there's a lot of women that don't believe, and there are a lot of men that are like this too, that don't believe that a father adds to the development of a child. But they do. When you look at almost every statistic, that it comes down, you know, that is in our society. I don't care if it's teenage pregnancy. I don't care if it's delinquency. I don't care if it's truancy. I don't care <laughs> if it's going to jail, <laughs> uh, drugs. I mean, almost everything in our society, it almost always goes back to uh, a missing father. And what's really interesting in the Bible there's three things, there's three types of people that God always says, watch out for and make sure that you take care of them. And those three people, three types are the poor, the widows, which is really interesting. And I'm going to go back to that in a second. And then the fatherless. Those are the three. Over and over again, God is always saying, you have to watch out for these people. You have to watch out for these people. You have to watch out for these people. And it's funny that two of them are missing a man. The widow has lost her husband and you could be a widow at 30. OK, and then the child doesn't have a father. God understands what's missing. And see what happened, especially in the black community, we've gotten into this mindset that a missing dad is not important. And so a lot of times when women are out here and they're choosing men, they're choosing men that won't be there for them because they don't, don't really care. They're just like, oh, well, he's cute. Oh, we have fun. And now, you know, he might have gave me one or two babies instead of thinking, no, I want a man that's going to be there with me the long haul. And see, that's how, you know, so many women are able to save themselves um, a little bit longer in certain communities because they're like, look, I ain't having no baby with just anybody. I could go down that, that road in its own video, literally, because it is that long. But I, what I want you to understand is that there is power, okay, in the man. There is power in the man being there for his children. And I'm going to tell every single man out there that, that's out there, especially if you have a boy, if you are a... Um, a dad and you don't live with your children and you have a son, I'm just going to tell you, if you can't afford it, fight for your son, get your son living with you. And if you are a woman and you have a son, please, please, for the love of God, um, if that child is over eight years old, um, please let your um, baby daddy, 
if he's a good man, if he's a good man, if he's not a good man, don't do this. But if he's a good man, please let him raise that that boy, please, because there are certain things that women just do not understand about men. And if you try to fake the funk and try to put it in there, every man is going to know it. And so you're actually doing yourself a disservice. I actually dated a, a lady that she actually felt shame because a lot of her friends had made her feel shame because she had actually given her son over to her baby daddy. You know, she had had a baby, you know, when she was in her early 20s. And when the child turned like four, you know, she was between jobs and she was just like, you know, I'm I really can't do this. I'm having a hard time. And I think her baby daddy was married at that time. So she was just like, you know, he wanted his son. And so she went on and gave it to him and all her friends, you know, tried to bash her for it. And I told her straight up, I was like, no, you did the best thing for your son. I was like, don't let anybody trash you. Cause I was like, you have blessed your son beyond what you recognize you have blessed him because he needs a man. And like I said, I think a woman can do a really great job, you know, with a son that's all the way up to about, you know, nine or 10 years old. But the closer he gets to 12, the clo- the, the more he really needs to be with his dad, because there are certain things that, like I said, he's just going to have to learn and a man just needs to teach it to a man. But if you're a woman and that is not a possibility, and I know I'm getting sidetracked, but this is really important. If you're a woman and, and like I said, and, and you're in that situation, what you need to do is you need to put your son around as many male figures as you possibly can. OK, and then I'll also encourage you to be very hard on your son. One of the issues with a lot of people is that they're very a lot of women. What they do is they raise their daughters and they soften their sons. But if you were married, what would happen is that your uh, husband would soften the daughter and he would raise the son. But because he's missing, that's how you get so many men that are soft and so many women that are sharp. But see, because the, the husband is going to come in like. If I'm a father of a little girl, I'm going to be like, you ain't got to worry about you're going to find somebody just like daddy that's going to take care of you. Yeah, daddy loves you. Daddy takes care of you. And you always going to be my little girl. And you don't have to worry about it because daddy going to take care of you. And you ain't got to worry about it. whatever man gets to you. You ain't got to worry about it. he going to take care of you. And see, I'm going to be softening her. So no matter what her mama says, her daddy going to say something slightly different and it's going to soften that sharp edge. But then when a, a a woman is talking to her son, it's like, well, you know, mama always going to be there for you. You know, mama always going to take care of you. Then the son going to come to me and like, boy, ain't nobody going to take care of your butt. When you turn 18, I'm kicking you out of the house. You got to get a job or you got to go to the military or you can go to college. Okay. No, 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 no. Your mama ain't going to bring you back in the house. I'm telling you, you ain't never coming back. I love you. But you got to be a man and two men can't be in the same house. OK, two lions can't be with the pride. So you got to go. And you see the difference. All right. So that is what happens. So the second thing she talked about was she was raised by a single mom. And so she understands the struggle. So if you are raised by a single mom and a woman or a man, this is why I'm always telling you guys to read, read, read. You have to fill in the gaps of the missing information. And there is things that are missing because you don't understand how a man and a woman um, interact with each other. And that's another reason why I'm always encourage you all um, that whatever you see, remember, whatever you see goes into your mind. It's an advertisement, you know, so whatever you see goes into your mind. So that's why I want you all to watch strong relationships on TV. You know, I want you to watch the Cosby show. I want you to watch Parenthood. I want you to watch Martin. Um, I don't care. You know, you can watch I Love Lucy. You can watch Everybody Loves Raymond. I don't care. I want you to watch a married couple or very close to being married couple dealing with life. Mike and Molly, you know, dealing with life. All right. The ups and downs, the mistakes. Okay, because this is important, because if you've missed it, these shows can give you a little bit of it. You have to remember they're comedies. All right. So they're making fun of stuff. But they're still trying to let you know what a relationship can be and how a man and a woman can work together. 
And so you want to build on that sweetness that is in those shows. All right. Responsibility. You made the babies together. So take some time, be mindful and, you know, pick a child's father, pick a husband if you can. If you've already picked a child's father, you know, inadvertently, that's fine. Work with what you have um, and, you know, find another possible husband. But if you can, ideally, find a husband and then start your families. That's one of the problems that Black America is struggling with. We don't have as many two-parent homes as other cultures. And regardless of what people think, it is a problem for our young people. So I'm sorry I said it unapologetically. I ain't sorry she said it and I'm glad she said it. And again, I'm gonna talk about it again. Um, I just, I'm actually working on, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, but it'll be out very soon. My Money Making Monday. So you'll know those particular videos because they'll be in green. Um, I definitely encourage everyone to watch them. But one of the ones that's coming out, it basically talks about the fact that African-Americans are actually at the bottom. Uh, economically in the United States. And when it comes to the people at the top, because white people are not even at the top, the people that are at the top generally have stronger families. See, everything that builds, it builds off family. It does. You're always going to have your one offs. OK, but everything builds on family. And so the stronger your family is, the more you can do. And again, just think about it like this. If you have two people in a house and they both made fifty thousand dollars a year. OK, which is about average standard. I think it's a little bit high, actually. But if they both made fifty thousand dollars a year, if they lived alone, they both would have to spend about, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a month or maybe even two thousand dollars a month, maybe a little bit under to just have a house or an apartment. But because they're married and they're living together now, one of them is paying that two thousand, but then now you have a two thousand dollars left over. And then when you do like the phone, you get phone plans and then you're sharing the electricity and the heating. See, everything is shared at that point. So you're actually saving money. And when you save money, what do you do? You invest it, invest it. Don't waste it on crap. So don't keep buying a million Jordans. OK, or a million of this or a million of that. Invest it. And it's easier to control the investment when you can tell your wife like, hey, you know, you watch the kids. Let me go over here and check on this investment for a little while and then I'll come back. Versus if you if, if a woman is sitting there, and she's trying to raise two kids and now she's trying to keep up with them and keep up with her investments and keep up with this and keep up with that. It's just too much. Apologetically. And number four, you need a wealth building partner. I saw a statistic um, that grieved me so badly when I looked up to see what um, the racial group, which racial group has the lowest rates of home ownership. Um, it says black households at just 41.7%, black households have the lowest home ownership rate nationally, 30.0 percentage points lower than white households. And that's bad. And I know a lot of black women, you know, who are empowered and strong women are out here saying, well, you know, I bought my own house. Yeah, you did. But the majority of our people are not and our children are not being brought up. OK, so remember as well, when you watch it, if you're a woman or if you're a man that, you know, she's talking about this whole empowerment thing. Remember, people show you what they want you to see. And I've talked about it before when you start talking about statistics and the statistics say that actually black men make more money than black women. In general. So we're not talking about the high powered black women here. We're not talking about the uber successful black women here, because those are the ones that they want to show you on TV. Let's just be real. A lot of people can afford a house. But the, the point is, what's the average? OK, so you have to look at it from that perspective. You have your uber successful people. But then what's the average? And the average black woman only makes about thirty eight thousand dollars a year. So even though you have these high powered women that are making seventy five thousand and above, the average black woman is like a little bit lower. And even if you have a black man and he's saying, OK, well, I make fifty thousand um, dollars a year again it's still not you know as powerful you know if you if you don't combine them because 50 plus you know 38 now you almost at 90 and that's a lot of power if you work together 
in you know homes where the people own the house they might have beautiful cars in the driveway but they're not owning their homes and that's one of the best ways to ensure that you have um, you know a high net worth and that will bring that up what you need is equity in your house um, no equity goes in your cars no equity goes into Louis Vuitton bags or um, Christian Louboutin shoes I don't have any and I don't want any per se I'd rather go on a nice trip I'm, that's the kind of person I am but we need somebody who can build Build wealth with us that's how college educations are paid for for our children and how our children don't have exorbitant student loan debt um, unlike other cultures of people who might not this is just the best plan not saying that you can um, accomplish and achieve from a different position I grew up in a single family home a single parent home rather so it's not saying that you can't experience success but it just makes things easier and then number five I saw another um, thing um, it said marriage is good for women's physical and mental health I think that ties back to the one you need someone to share the load with um, because um, it said that um, it helps um, to reduce the death rate by a third for females even among those who later divorced you're not meant to be alone the same way and I'm gonna to resort to the Bible on this one um, the Bible did say in Genesis that man ought not be alone woman ought not be alone you need companionship and you need someone who's down for you what for whatever comes what may and then also if you know if all age breaks loose and you have to split you get half of something that you've worked to build you guys split up your assets and you go on your separate way you have assets marital assets when you're living with somebody or shacking up as my mother would say you're not going to have that and that's what we want a wealth building partner a ride or die someone who has your back a great father and someone who will love you hopefully for the rest of your life all right so i think that that was really great advice that she had so the last thing she brought up which was talking about health again i, I agree with that because again you're, you're dealing with the emotional the spiritual not just the literal physical and again you can divvy up uh, duties around the house you know so somebody can be cooking while another person be cleaning you can do so much more if you have more hands and more eyes to watch the children and different things like that Marriage, like I say, is the foundation. It is the core if you really want to grow and you want to do generational wealth. There is no generational wealth without healthy children. It's hard to raise healthy children unless you have a certain structure at home that can give them such. And again, you know, people might say, well, I don't need that. I don't need that. We got this. We got that. Look, historically, all you have to do, look historically, look at how people come into this country and they come into this country married with literally pennies. They have no money. And yet within 15 years, many of them are doing better than the average African-American. Think about that. And this is why black people need to really understand the power of marriage. See, we've never had that on our side throughout our American history we've never had marriage on our side we were always in a situation where we were kind of forced here or forced there and it wasn't enough education getting within people to actually build them up in the right way we literally have been brought up through so much turmoil but the thing about it is that's in the past we cannot continue to say, well, you know, it's because all this stuff happened to us. It's because all this stuff happened to us. Well, okay, that's fine. It happened to us. My dad literally remembers, you know, um, the colored area in Memphis. You know, he tells me stories about when he was like eight years old and he would, he would go to the, uh, to the movie theater and he had to sit upstairs in the balcony because only the white people were allowed to be at the bottom. He remembers that. But that wasn't my reality. That's not your reality. So the whole point here is to get better with every generation.
But what's happened in the African-American community is now we're starting to get worse. And the reason why we're getting worse is because we neglected the most important thing, which is marriage. It is key. And like I said, when you look at all these other cultures, when you look at African cultures, you'll have people from Nigeria come over here. And it might be some Nigerians watching right now. What's up, Nigerians? And they will come. In. I know there's plenty of them in, in, in Atlanta. I've done work with them. Okay? And they love me. I ain't gonna lie about it. They love me. African women love me. And I'll sit there and they will build their family. And they will have those two people. And like I say, within 10 years, they're living it up. They're living the dream that most generational black people would love to have. But see, generational black people, they want to keep doing what they want to do instead of what they need to do. And that's why I talk about maturity all the time, because maturity is doing what you don't want to do necessarily, but you do it because you know you need to do it. So anyway, please like, please subscribe, and I'm going to see you all in the very next video.